What's up everyone, welcome back to more of our decision making <laughs> in Starfield. So yeah, I think you don't have to pick a choice, it's more just talk to them. Uh, but I'm sure eventually we'll have to pick a side. As you might them. think the emissary I'm is sure on your you'll side, have more questions. but your Ask. persistence is what forced It's not an easy to experience to describe, Remember but the Unity that. will speak to you, offer you the chance to become Starborn. You will be leaving this universe behind to be reborn. Everything you were before will be gone. Maybe that's why it offers the choice. Compassion? Or is it testing us? You've seen the terror the Hunter causes. Every time a Starborn goes through the Unity, they get more artifacts, find more temples, gain more power. We can't let more like him abuse these gifts to destroy whatever's in their way. Different. I never know who you are when I meet a new version, but so much of you stays the same. It's hard, but each universe is precious in its own way. Mine will never have its original you in it again, as yours won't have its real me. When all the artifacts are assembled, the device they create is called the Armillary. In many ways, it's a model of the multiverse itself. Through it, you can reach the Unity. And from there, you can become Starborn. There'll be a lot of dialogue this episode. The Unity is meant for whomever can get there. Don't fall for that talk of worthiness. Whoever created the artifacts and built those temples is playing a game with us. One whose prize is access to the center of all creation. There are no rules. Whoever gets all the pieces wins. And I've won. Over and over. I don't kill for the unity. I find the easiest pathway to it. I want his armor. I've simply found that it's the quickest way. Talking, forming alliances, waiting for the right moment to commit theft. It's all so tiresome. I'll admit you getting away has been the most interesting thing to happen in quite some time. As soon as I realized what had happened, I knew I needed to wait until this meeting with the Emissary to decide what to do about you. <laughs> no, we always end up having this meeting at this time. But it's the usual affair. Can we make peace? No? Oh, how tragic. Honestly, I was beginning to wonder why I kept tending. And it's bad habit I started a long time ago. Perhaps I just like meeting the emissary to gloat. <laughs> but you have provided something quite new to talk about. Maybe you're a random die roll. Or maybe the Unity is finally responding to all my hard work. They enter the Unity, take artifacts from others, employ force, all the things I do. I am many things, but I would never tell anyone what to do with their gifts. That is your decision, not someone else's. The Emissary wants to become the judge of who gets to enter, but the Unity itself doesn't judge. To see what would happen, of course. You might not understand just how many times I've done this. Usually, you're the one who ends up dead, and whoever cries over your body goes on to become the Emissary. Sometimes I manage to get you all bunched up and take care of the problem in one go. And sometimes the Emissary has gotten to me first, and I never arrive. 
Hundreds and hundreds of variations of me, hacking through Constellation. And it's almost never you. You making it to your ship on your own. That's new. I took it as a sign. I don't get many of those anymore. How do we have powers if we are not a star one anymore? Or already? Before you leave, I want to give you something. A way to another artifact, but also a lesson in how dangerous they can be. Seek the moon of old earth. There are secrets there you must discover for yourself. Here, to open the way. And I am sorry we have not always been forthcoming. I hope you will see what I have seen. You should also talk to your colleagues in Constellation. I am sure they have gathered more information on the remaining artifacts in the fringes of space. Part of me wonders what they will all say about what you have learned. But I will leave that to you. Get with the story. So many people, all in one place. I still cannot feel entirely comfortable. I did not spend as much time here as some of the others, but I appreciate that I was still given my own room. Mateo told us about your pilgrim's voyage. You found it, didn't you? The meaning of unity. Wait, say that again? Multiple universes? You can't possibly mean what I think you mean. Yes, I wouldn't mind a little more detail. I don't even want to think about the physiological changes you'd need to travel between universes. Plus what it would do to the mind? Enlightenment? Or oblivion? Like the hunter. You have the opportunity to reach the closest thing to your god that might exist. And you're second guessing it? One doesn't approach the afterlife without some trepidation. You're right. We have to see the unity for ourselves. Uh, not to make a sharp turn in a grand tale, but I got the eye fixed up. Bruised, but still blinking. Let me know when you're ready to follow up on what it's seen. We take the mission once. Hmm. Yeah, this is probably getting more artifacts and this is going to them. You got time for a quick chat? These last glimpses from the eye are from the farthest fringes of known space. Could be the only remaining pieces outside the hands of the Starborn. Aye. The blackest sea seems less of a concern when there are sharks leaping out at you. Catch a smile out there. Who said they wanted to talk? 
You are straight out of one of those film noir novels. Working undercover and thwarting the bad guys. <laughs> Just walking around the key makes my skin crawl. How'd you pull it off? Come on, not this again. Since death put us in some shitty situations, that is for certain. I mean, don't get me wrong, helping Sysdef was never on my bucket list. Commander Akande, he really wasn't as much of a tight ass as I was expecting. And ultimately, he had your back, so... I guess here's to Sysdef. <laughs> oh, shucks. Well, this victory, really, it's all you. I just wanted to say, when we first teamed up, I had a good feeling about you. But this... You really helped people. Helped everyone. I can't wait for our next adventure. Oh, thank God it was a lot. Hmm? Our map plus give the moon. been there previously, that's good. Makes it easier for us. Supercomputer. Project. This one, that's the slider. It would seem that the occupants left in a hurry. Nova Galactic Project Log. Principal Engineer Lang Shu. I admit, this is not okay, the most for disciplined no team I've ever run. To be concerned about. Malcolm keeps stealing computational time on Voltaire, and thinks I don't know this. And Sabine has been distracted lately, but won't tell anyone why. I really should demand answers from both of them. But honestly, I'm too preoccupied with this contract. We all are. Despite anything going on in our personal lives, there's something special about what we're building here. I don't think I'd collect all of those data logs. I didn't even find all of them, I bet. vessels that are going to travel the stars? We're literally on a base on the moon. Oh, come on, Sabina. I'm trying to share my dreams here. Well, your dreams are always out there and never here where the rest of us live. Can't you just be happy doing your job? Where's the fun in that?
communication link to Earth every couple of days. And let me tell you, there's long distance dating, and then there's like long distance dating, you know? Oh, hey there, I'm a scientist, deadly employed, willing to take you out for coffee in like six months when I'm back from space. <laughs> it's not a great opening line. <sighs> you seriously can't get a date? You're an astronaut. Hey, no one asked you. And this thing has the stupidy locks. Hope you can succeed at that before we are discovered. There's no one here, dude. Chill.
Did I get all the recordings? Engines in a time almost complete. Total time 5 minutes 22 seconds. Right on schedule. How are the helium 3 valves holding, Nova? We double checked the leakage concerns this morning before the launch. All signs green. Any changes to the calculation sequence for the air? No changes since we uploaded the last figures here. yesterday. It's a clean shot from here to Jupiter. To be standing on such One day to keep me the aboard the spaceship. Just imagine that. One miracle of science at a time, Canaveral. Counting down in five, four, three, two, one. Canaveral, are you reading? All clear, Nova. Indicators look good. The ship should be cruising Jupiter's orbit right now. Visual confirmation will be possible in... <laughs> 32 minutes. Afraid the speed of light is on the slow side these days. <laughs> How does it feel to break the laws of physics, Canaveral? We're all pretty excited down here at NASA, I won't lie. Excited enough to tell me where you got the original data? Not in a million years, Nova. Earth, yeah. I wish it would just land. Sight is us. clear. You said start. Captain Knight, it is pleasant to see you. And we have landed closer. like this were once absolutely essential to ensuring our survival. And now here they are, buried and forgotten. Perhaps an elevator will allow us to access what lies beneath all this dust. I 
think I have a bunch of extra fuel cells in the ship. Let me actually get some. I have a feeling we'll need them. This is gonna go through the animation for 10 seconds. Travel. were lost because this ship never launched. We had to come this way, there was no way to climb from that side. A lot of upgrade materials, so I'll take it. talking in here.
Oh wow, it's a darn big darn. Can we speak for a moment? Did you need something? Or you were the one who said, can we speak for a moment? If you have the time, I wish to speak to you. Oh, I don't have the time. God. Dr. Judith Tatien, the recent delivery from Mars is unsettling. I was expecting rock samples or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead, Dr. Victor Isa comes with two members of the military. Everything they have brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Station log, Dr. Judith Tatien. I have been trying to cozy up to Dr. Isa. Victor, to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military handrails, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little gray man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallurgical engineering. Oh, we have a meeting tomorrow. I think I'm being invited into the lab. Station log. Dr. Judith Satien. I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was just to throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I don't know how much I should say, but the periodic table just got thrown out the window. They found more metals and stuff, more elements.
I suppose they had a right to be. It's supposed to go down, so let's go up and explore. Yes. 20 times to do it. Answers. And yet here I stand, feeling like I understand even less than I did before. This talk of the unity of a, a multiverse? Dead friends appearing again? It, it is all simply too much. Bro, I just wanted to give you all the stuff I was scaring. I didn't want to talk to you. Does it? Perhaps you find all this satisfactory, but I am afraid I do not. We must take the word of a murderer and follow him into the unity? What if it does nothing the Starborn have claimed? So you would just step into this unity based on what? Feelings? You have no idea what will happen if you do. None at all. Yes, I understand there are profound implications to all of this, but I do not see how you can be so eager to follow in the footsteps of the Starborn. Even if everything the Starborn have said is true. If you pass into this unity and come out in... in some other universe... Look at who they are, and what they have become. They have the faces and voices of people you know, but are nothing like them. Are you not at all worried that the same fate would befall you? That you would become someone unrecognizable to the rest of us? I really don't care, bro. <laughs> now you sound like Sarah. But you are not wrong. I will do my best to assume the best, but you cannot blame me for preparing for the worst. We should get back to it. Now that we know what to work towards, there's no time to waste. Thank you. Where do you supposed to give all this? What is it? I keep.
I think it's quite straightforward. That's not what I'm asking. We've had no success extracting even a sample of material from the object. No explanation for the gravitational effects, no motion graph to explain its harmonic frequencies. I can't even establish a melting point. Judith. But you've had me building these prototype colliders for months. And now you want me to bump helium-3 into it based on this equation you've written on a goddamn napkin? I just need you to trust me. I have been trusting you. We keep slamming our heads against a brick wall, getting nothing. And you keep coming up with something new to try. Like, you know what's going to happen. Where are you getting your information, Victor? I'm sorry, Judith. I... Look, not here, okay? Somewhere off base. I'll tell you everything. But I'm not lying, okay? We're going to discover something important here. I promise. testing for planetary habitats. <laughs> the looks on their faces, if we could show them all oh, that we have learned. There's way too many materials.
was wondering when the combat of the game was. We had no combat in the circle. Yeah, let me stop this here and I'll uh, continue from here on the next episode. It's, it's a pretty long mission, I wasn't expecting it to go for this far. But yeah, thanks for checking this one out and I'll see you guys around.